Good. Okay, so I'm going to get started, folks. I trust that everyone can hear me. Uh, and thank you very much indeed uh, for giving up your time to join me this evening just to go over this uh, DBS um, CRC integration process. And really what it's about is actually aligning the whole DBS process a lot more with whole game. And I've got everything crossed that everyone is using the whole game system on a regular basis uh, as well for officers logging in there and going to your safeguarding pages. I'm hoping that you're doing that, as I say, on a very regular basis, so that you're able to keep track of all your volunteers um, qualifications, because obviously it gives you a, a RAG rating on there um, for as they're, as they're safeguarding. DBS and uh, first aid as all those qualifications run out there they're rated uh, red amber green so you can keep track of them and chase your volunteers as and when necessary so this is really um, aligning the application process of the DBS in with that safeguarding screen that you see uh, when you log in to the whole game Hopefully you'll know who I am now, and if we haven't met before, um, you're welcome. Uh, hopefully I'll see you at some events coming up in the, in the future. And this is what we're about. Uh, yeah, if anyone's in any doubt, and they do regularly change the acronym as they like to do, uh, criminal records checks, uh, as you'll see the terminology now, they're going over to DBS Disclosure and Barring Service. But what this integration is all about is um, I'm going to describe some key steps to you, show you the end-to-end -end process um, for your clubs and club officials, and uh, point out the advantages. One of which, well, the most important part is it's less work for you as club welfare officers. Um, but also one of the other major advantages is it's, it's, this is fully automated. So if you know the process at the moment, when a check is completed, basically a notice sent through to the FA and there is a person who manually updates uh, the individual's fan record, which obviously is open to human error. And also depending on how busy they are at the time, it means that those checks can take seven to 10 days to chunk on a fan record. Under this system, because it's automated, so long as their check is clear, it gets updated instantly. So it's much, much quicker. Um, yeah, I appreciate people have got pens and papers. Um, I'm happy for you to make notes, but I will point out, I have got some um, handouts that I will uh, email out to you after this presentation, which which uh, sort of reiterates what, what's, um, what goes on in here. Okay. Uh, excellent. So just to give you a little bit of history, um, it was uh, piloted last season, this process by the FA, uh, with a few counties around the country. Um, so it's been through its testing process and it's found to work. So this season it's been rolled out so that every county's got it. And we in Surrey FA have signed up for it and it's now open for all our clubs to use. Um, all you do is you add in your PIN number, which will go out in a second, and then you add in your individuals. Um, and this is the other part of it. We had um, people who were volunteering in our clubs. They didn't show up on your whole game records until they were actually, they'd been through this process and they were assigned a role as a coach or, or whatever their, or first aid or team secretary or whatever their role was within the club. Now you can we can all track them at a very early stage because there's a new status on the whole game of a, CRC, a club CRC applicant. Um, what happens is when, when we put them onto the system against your club, they are sent um, when the, to their whole game account, they get a CRC tile, which we'll go into. They then press that tile and then that starts the process off. So for those of you that remember the old days that you used to email them out some instructions, again, you don't do that anymore. Once you've added them as a CRC applicant, the whole process, other than obviously the document verification part, is all automated. And although there's a couple of extra, if I'm honest, there's a couple of extra processes for the applicant to go through, there's far fewer processes for you as work for officers to go through. Um, yeah, and as you see there, the account pin, fan, and contact details are sent to the applicant. So again, where you used to send out that A4 sheet, that's now automatically sent to the applicant by Gboard Group. Um, and then it follows the normal process where they fill out the application online, uh, as they have done previously. It then flags back to you as well for officer, but it flags back to you in whole game system that now they're ready to have their application, their documents verified. You'd meet up in the normal way. Um, verify the documents. And this is the one and only time in theory that you need to log into the GBG website is when you come to do that online document verification. Other than that, 
you so in theory you don't have to log into the gbg site again because you'll see all the updates uh, when you log into whole game and as i say at the end of it the uh, the individual's phone record assuming that their their disclosure certificate is clear their phone record is automatically updated so again it's a, it's quicker because it's not going through um, a human process to update their phone records okay so to just sort of look, look at the nuts and bolts of it, um, as you can, when you log in now, if you've logged in recently and you go into your club safeguarding page, that's what you'll get up as I said about the rag rated and you'll see all your uh, volunteers in there. And you'll see it, it's in blue at the moment, but uh, the tab of, of club safeguarding next to it is a greyed out tab of CRC applications. Um, if, you, if you haven't already done so, when you click on that, you go to that screen go into it for the very first time it's going to ask you for your club's organization pin okay now hopefully you've all got that if you're all verifiers registered with um, gbg uh, you will have that six digit pin number um, if you as i say if you haven't already put it in well that's the first very first thing you do you put your club's pin in there and then it rec and then it links everything up it recognizes your pin and all the checks that go through your club it will link up um, so you put your organization pin in there and then click the update and it effectively it registers your club on the system um, to to do your checks this way one thing to note on it is if for any reason you get that number wrong um, if you mistype it or some people um, when they did the testing of it they didn't know what it was and they just put any old number in there they put fan numbers in, in there and all sorts once you've put your pin number in there and press the submit button you can't change it okay so if you do get that number that pin number wrong for any reason you're going to have to contact me because we're the only ones that can change it. You can see that's the same we get to our end and we can alter your PIN number for you. So if you if you do make a mistake on that, please contact me and I can sort that out. So there you go. You put in your you put in your PIN number. As you can see an example here. Their organisation is PIN is 102122. And you'll see there you're, you're set and ready to go. And you can add new official down there. Um, and that's what you do if you get a now if you get an applicant who comes to you or a volunteer that comes to you that wants to do a check through you you'll add them in there it's the same as if um, you were adding them in any other official role you'll need either their name or their fan number and you'll need their date of birth you don't necessarily need their postcode but if you put in those two bits and hit search then you will find them so I guess at a stage before this if they are brand new into football and they haven't got a fan number the first thing you're going to have to get your your applicant to do is go away and set up a fan number because you can otherwise that obviously the system won't recognize them until they've set that up as you say once they have done that you can search them using their name fan number and date of birth we're using the example of danny mcconnell who is employed by the fa and the reason we use him specifically or his example is in here is because he's got um He's got, uh, that's not the name that his official documents are in. So it helps us to describe how we overcome that situation. So there he is. He comes up as being Danny McConnell. And you can see you've got a green button there that allows you to add him as an official. Uh, you can see actually he's got two clubs there. And you may come across that. You may have some of your coaches that are coaching with your club and with another. So it will show up both clubs. But when you add it against your pin, um, it will be it will be your club doing the check. So the individual needs to know which club they're doing it through so that they know to come to you to get their documents verified. Okay. Any questions so far? Good. Okay. Well, keep going. Um, I say more than happy to, to field questions at the end. So there you go. He comes up there. His, there's his fan number. And you can see over on the uh, right hand side there, it gives you a status of his application. I, it's not started at the moment. And that status, as I say, updates. So you don't have to keep check, uh, logging into GBG to find out what stage their, their application is at because it will update you through whole game here. As I said to you, once you've once you've set them up on the system and you set them up as a club CRC applicant on uh, on your end uh, as club welfare officer, what the 
volunteer needs to do, they now need to log into whole game themselves. So using their fan number and password, they log into whole game. And you'll see down the left hand side there, the buttons there, the very bottom button is my CRC. So they need to log into whole game, hit my CRC button, and it will come up with this message. Um, in fact, that one says it's uh, it's not yet due for renewal, but they will be given the option there. Uh, you can see it's only allowed renewal within six months, but they'll be given the option in there to say that they want to start the process. And there it is. So, and because as I said to you earlier, um, Danny McConnell, who's our example here, he had more than one club. So it asks you which club you're doing your check through. As you see there, it's only come up with the one option there. He's doing it through FA Demonstration Club. He hits the select button and it starts the process off. But it's worth mentioning to them because there's a very subtle difference on the screen when they hit that select button, they get that message in the red box at the top. And knowing what many of our volunteers are like, they won't all read that. But effectively what that's telling them is that they've now got to go through, as I said, there's more processes for them. But as I said, if you recall in the old days, you used to send them out um, the, A, the A4 sheet saying, this is how you, this is our pin number. This is the club's pin number. This is a secret word. That's now automatically sent to them in an email. And that's what that message is that at the top is saying. So when they've hit the select button, they've now got to log into their email account, which is linked to their fan. So again, if they haven't used their fan for a long time, it's probably worth them checking that the email address they've got on their fan is correct and up to date because as I say the instructions for how to complete the application will be sent to their email address. And when you go back in um, from your end you can see now that it's updated there Danny McConnell's application has now started which means that he's he's um, logged into whole game um, and that he's, he's started the, the ball rolling he's hit that uh, start of application he's been sent the email and he now needs to go in and start filling out the application so there you go that summarizes what I've just said to you an, auto, an, auto, an, an email is automatically sent to the applicant to give them the instructions of how they log into GBG and fill out the application which is what they do uh, fill out the application the normal way they will then need to come back to you uh, obviously to have their documents verified and you'll get a notification of that on your screen at your end uh, and that as I say it's the one and only time that you as um, well for us as stroke verifiers need to go need really to log into GBG is to just do that verification process and then once you've hit the select once you've hit the submit button around there document verification and the check has been paid for however whatever your payment method is then that's it um, it's it's uh, it just runs through its process and as I say you'll be updated via your whole game account as to what stage that's at um, and at the end of it assuming their certificate is clear, um, it will automatically be updated on their fan record. So there you go, you see that's the, that's what you'll see. You can see that um, Danny McConnell's check is going through. He's now filled out, out the application and it, it flags up. If the, app, if the individual themselves doesn't contact you and tell you, the system will tell you now that you need to contact Danny McConnell to sort out his ID verification. Now here's the issue where they're known as uh, by other names. So, and we, as I say, we use Danny McConnell specifically. Danny McConnell, his um, correct name or his, his name that he was given at birth was Thomas O'Connell, uh, McConnell, I should say. But he likes to be known as Danny, um, and that's not uncommon for people where they abbreviate their names. But there, as we know, their official documents are in. You know, for example, me, I might want to be known on whole game as Phil, but actually, all my documents that I um, use for verification are in the name of Philip. So this is our option to do that. Um, as I say, we can fill in there what their preferred name is um, and what their actual name is. You can't do that at your end because as you can see there, that's not a, a version of whole game that you would recognize. So where you have that situation where um, they are known or they want to be known by one name, but actually their documentation will be in another name. Then again, you're going to have to contact me and let me know. I can update their fan record. And it means that that application is then all joined up. Because in the past where they use different names, 
what they would do is they would go if they didn't match up with a fan record they go away and make another fan record and that's where we ended up with lots of duplicates so again this system will hopefully um, help reduce the number of duplicate fans we have because we can just add those names in that um, they want to be known by when it goes through the system if assuming the disclosure is clear um, then as you see there the individual's fan record is automatically updated um, and you can see on there um, it shows on there as accepted that stays on the on the portal there for 30 days any others i.e those who's um has as they term it who have content on their certificate that follows the same process as before and what for those of you that don't know what happens is we have a um a central uh FA dbs help desk which is based up at nottingham they pick up all of those that um, have content on them uh, if you're unfamiliar with it they don't know what the content is because under um, gdpr um, data protection laws the gbg group aren't allowed to tell um, the fa what is on that certificate so what happens is the people at Nottingham write to the individual. If it's Phil Rendell, they'll write to me and say, Phil, we know that you've got something on there, but we don't know what it is. We need to risk assess that to make sure that you're suitable to work with our young people. And the first thing they'll ask me to do is to send in my certificate so that they can see what's on there. I don't know exactly what their criteria are. I don't need to know. I don't do the risk assessments. But for example, folks, you know, if I've got a drink drive conviction from 30 years ago, then it's a very quick process. They'll say that's fine. You can carry on. Um, if it's more, if it's something more serious than that, and more recent than that, then there'll be further correspondence between um, uh, uh, FA DBS help desk and the individual to carry out that risk assessment. And they may, they may, they'll ask for more detail around what, what the offences were. They may ask for references, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So if you see one that's not updated quickly, that could well be the reason for it going through that risk assessment process with the FA. And that's pretty much it. I think we're coming to the end now. I do have an applicant's guidance, which I will step up to you, which again shows the different screens for the in, for the individual applicants, as we've seen here, guides them through the process. As I say, there is additional work for them because in the sense that um, they've got to log into the whole game system first to set the ball rolling. Then they have to log into their emails to get the, um, the instructions. And then finally, they log into GBG to start the application process. So there's one or two additional steps for them, but there's a lot fewer steps for you as well for officers, because all you do is you add them onto the whole game um, from your end as a CRC applicant. Um, and I've got guidance on that. And then after that, as I say, you any time you log into GBG is to verify their documents. Um, folks, I think is pretty much it. So 